What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering and some interesting insider information from Blizzard. Now, I've been collecting it from a variety of sources, and I've been able to substantiate at least from two points, two completely different sources, most of it. And it would appear that, as far as I'm told, some high ups at Blizzard have decided to leave quietly, some of them not so much publicly, and I'm told that the final straw, among other reasons, was the Hong Kong debacle. Now, there's some other worrying trends going on for Blizzard. I'm going to go through that. Then I'm going to go through all the leaks that I got from Blizzard, uh, my Blizzard sources, and we'll see if any of this makes sense. So the stocks with Activision Blizzard this year are going to be rough. I don't think anyone would bet against them in 2020, especially if Overwatch 2 comes out. Diablo 4 comes out. Um, I would imagine that they'll do quite well. The third quarter is once again better than expected for Activision Blizzard, which always seems to set expectations it can easily clear. Revenue of $1.28 billion beat the guidance of $1.11, but was also down sharply from the $1.51 a year ago. Revenue can go up and down depending on game launches, but what investors should be keeping an eye on is engagement. We may be seeing long-term deterioration of Activision Blizzard's critical engagement figures, and that will hurt its current perceived price as our status as a growth stock. Now let's take a look at this. Activision's declining engagement. Each quarter, Activision Blizzard reports monthly active users, MAUs, MAUs. This is the big number because these are the people that have agreed you know, in principle to be committed to your games, whether that's through a subscription or other, other um, means. Uh, for a long time, engagement was rising on games like Call of Duty, Destiny, and World of Warcraft grew. But for the last couple of years, the engagement trend has been heading lower as games like Fortnite take gamer interest. It's, it, that's an interesting question or statement to me because I'm pretty sure that this year's Modern Warfare was the best in many years. I mean, I think most people would agree on that. Now, a lot of people aren't in love with the online multiplayer, but I have a feeling that they'll get that sorted out. The shoddies are OP. Uh, they're basically a must-have. I've only played a little bit of online, but from what I could tell, if you're inside, you got to have a shoddy. Minimum. Um they're, they're definitely working on that. They'll nerf that, I think. We know that there's tons of new maps coming, and I think that they're really going to do a good job. But maybe people are just sick of Call of Duty. Uh, maybe several bad years um, have just turned people off. See, the thing is, like, when you finally see the effects, let's say Madden 20, if Madden 20 has a bad year, it's probably not necessarily anything that Madden 20 did, and it speaks more to what Madden 18 and what Madden 19 did or didn't do. You can see the above decline in engagement isn't a new phenomenon. It's been taking place for two full years and affects all of Activision Blizzard's divisions. So we look at, go back to 2017. Now let's look at Activision. 49 million, 46 million, 37 million, 36 million. Blizzard, 42 million, 37 million, 32 million in quarter two 2019. And only bumped up to 33 million in quarter three when we saw... WoW Classic relaunch. Now, King, a lot of people don't know about this. They talk about Activision Blizzard, but they also run the Candy Crush Empire. And King was at 293 million in 2017, dropped to 262, 258, 247. Literally every year, every game that these three major arms of the company put out is in decline. You can see that the above decline in engagement isn't a new phenomenon. It's been taking place for two full years and affects all of Activision Blizzard's divisions. Below is a chart showing the falling engagement hasn't yet led to a big decline in revenue and earnings, but the trend may continue to sink lower in 2019 if engagement doesn't pick up, and I would expect revenue to continue moving lower long term. Activision Blizzard isn't, I'm sorry, is going back to its old hits to try and attract more players. It recently launched Call of Duty Mobile. While gameplay is fun and reminiscent of classic Call of Duty hits, I don't think it's a game changer for a company like Activision Blizzard. That's hard to say. I mean, it's hard to agree with, I guess, because they had 150 million downloads, I think, in the first week. It was breaking all sorts of records. I would have thought that you could consider that a gigantic hit, uh, especially in foreign markets, where it would appear that 
you know, the mobile market is just much better than consoles. There's, you know, large business opportunities with people that don't have computers and don't have consoles, but they have the latest smartphone. So that's what they play. Esports hasn't been a golden ticket. One theory was that esports would help get the gamer interest, but it hasn't been demonstrated in the numbers. Overwatch and Call of Duty have successful and growing leagues, yet gameplay overall is declining for Activision Blizzard. The market has so far overlooked most of the recent decline in engagement, choosing to look at 2019 as a transition year before new games hit in 2020, but there's no guarantee that those new games will perform any better. I don't know. I'm reasonably sure Diablo 4 is going to sell very well. Um, the latest expansion for World of Warcraft, I think, is universally excited a lot of the existing while retail players from the feedback i'm getting will it be enough to get people back into the game i don't think so i think if anything was going to do that it's wow classic so if they continue to support wow classic by adding additional uh expansions you know moving forward in that time uh letting people relive that you may at minimum keep those new users because they had the biggest month in history when WoW Classic launched. You need to keep those. Uh, and you're only going to do that if you continue to support WoW Classic. There's no guarantee that these people will move over to retail while some of them may. And then you have Activision Blizzard telling investors to temper Q4 expectations. Activision Blizzard still has all the tools it needs to win in the competitive gaming industry. The company showed off its strength in its recent third quarter earnings report, which included surprisingly high sales. CEO Bobby Kotick and his team held a conference call with investors that put those numbers into perspective. Uh, yeah, you've had, you know, a lot going for you recently. But the interesting thing is what's going on inside of Blizzard specifically? Uh, there's a lot. My insiders tell me, a couple of things. Much of this has been substantiated by secondary sources, which I will tell you. And some of it is only coming from one source who has a history of being correct. Uh, but I haven't been able to verify it. So keep that in mind. Um, Tim Morton uh, left Blizzard this week quietly um, or last week, along with um, Chris Sigati and Brian Souza. Uh, from an art, uh, he's an art director. And the interesting thing about these positions, as I try to bring up something real quick, uh, Tim Morton, people know him, you know, from StarCraft. And, and maybe, you know, this is all kind of baking into the esports thing. But let's look at some of these, some of these people. I couldn't find Tim Morton's like professional history, but I'm pretty sure he's been with Blizzard a very long time. If we look at Chris. He's the executive producer and senior vice president at Blizzard Entertainment. He had been there for 24 years. Brian Souza, 12 years, going on 13 years, decided to leave. And you can see here, he announced it publicly just one day ago. Hello, everyone. After almost 18 years of Blizzard, and 26 in the game industry, I've decided to take a little time off to try new things. Right now, I have many dreams, but no real plans. I'll keep you up to date on my latest ambitions. It was an honor to work with those of you I've worked with, and perhaps I'll give the honor to work with more of you again in the future. Hit me up on here if you like. I'm looking forward to whatever fate may bring me. Long live and prosper, and thanks for all the fish. Then you have Chris Sagatti, who hasn't said anything yet, but... That rumor has been substantiated by several people for me, as well as, of course, Tim Morton. I'm told that at least for some of these, eh, Hong Kong was the final straw. And I'm going to go through some of what my source told me. Tim Morton has not made it public yet. He was there for all the RTS games, present and future. However, the RTS plans have basically been ended at Blizzard. So him leaving would make sense. He had been in charge of StarCraft 2 and then brought on to StarCraft Remastered and obviously um, WarCraft 3 Reforged. With him leaving there, there's no one left to bat for RTS and also with the art director leaving for Classic. That means an incubation, all incubation games that had been RTS are essentially dead and no plans ever for WarCraft 2 Remastered or WarCraft 4. Who knows? Which begs the question, is esports next to fall apart for Blizzard. 
Blizzard are trying to keep it on the Super DL about more higher-ups leaving, but it's sort of hard to keep under wraps and morale is super low. Uh, they go on to say, uh, they've also postulated that perhaps M Morheim, uh, former Br Blizzard president, is starting his own company and that maybe some of these people are moving over there. Uh, I asked about that see if they could get any more information. They said, I'm still trying to get definitive info on Morheim's new studio that's slowly forming from the people leaving Blizzard. It's all very hush-hush still. However, it's been said that the studio already has a name, which if true, you'd think the public records in the state of California will be searchable. Hmm, we'll keep you informed. Oh, and this fellow left Blizzard too, uh, which begs the question, what's the future of WoW? And that person is... I forgot to bring it up. Do, 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 Sorry. I'm a professional. Uh, In Exile Entertainment hires World of Warcraft lead producer Ray Kobo, an unexpected in addition to the In Exile team. Now, I don't have any public statements from these people. I only have my insiders uh, who shared with me unprompted that for at least some of these people, old Blizzard is dead and they don't want to work there anymore. A lot of changes have occurred in the gaming industry lately. We've seen Xbox Mike Ibarra join Blizzard and the initiative scoop up some great talent. Today, we receive word of another exciting hire in Exile Entertainment, the studio acquired by Microsoft and founded by Brian Fargo, and a 10-year Blizzard veteran and former World of Warcraft lead producer Ray Kobo as the studio's executive producer this week. In Exile's president, Chris Keenan, said the following. The Microsoft acquisition, acquisition has allowed us to add some exceptional talent, and we're looking forward to the wealth of experience Ray's bringing to the game now. People move jobs all the time. It's not uncommon, but this is the third or fourth kind of long-term veteran to leave the company. So that's going to be pretty interesting. Um, as always, uh, wait, and uh, I saw this coming. Oh, other reason I saw this coming. Also from talking to the Skeleton Crew folks left in Blizz Esports. The guy left right after Kim Pham, who basically <laughs> ruined StarCraft programs. That's their opinion, not mine at Blizzard, and also uh, his LinkedIn on refer for receipts of what he did. I'm sure eSports is going to just be Overwatch and whatever is left of WoW now. And we've seen Blizzard kind of backing out of eSports over the past couple of years simply because I don't think it's been profitable for them, which is shocking given just how profitable it is for everyone else around it. You know, this is why a lot of people who are more intelligent and have far more money than, than you or I have said, you know, investing in an esports team is a terrible investment and it's just not good. You're better off building your own brand. But we're going to have to keep an eye if any of these people kind of let anything slip. I wouldn't expect any of them to say, hey, it was absolutely Hong Kong that made me do it. But I would say now you've basically got people that have been there for, you know, here, Chris, allegedly, senior vice president, 24 years. You have Souza yesterday which proves my information. Uh, I actually have had this information for over a week, but I've been trying to verify it. None of these people will reply to me and they don't owe me anything, of course. But you're talking about a lot of people bailing out of Blizzard. Um, Tim Morton, a lot of interesting, interesting higher ups bailing out. They say Blizzard has changed. The writing may be on the wall. They would know better than us. But certainly I would think that Blizzard has a bright future with Diablo 4. Uh, but maybe not. Uh, maybe we'd all get our hope and it would split away from Activision and become the Blizzard of old. But nonetheless, these folks got a lot more professionalism than I do because if it was the reason I left, I'd make sure everyone knew it. But it's probably why they got hired at other places too, and I wouldn't. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.